and in a constable district that uh, has an elected or a registered voter population of 16,000 or less, the beginning of the range for that person should be 36,100. So we feel like we're following the statute here, and that's the minimum uh, required by statute, so we would recommend approval. Okay. Gentlemen? Yeah, uh, motion to approve the item with a question. Okay. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Your question, Mr. Waller? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Wingert, uh, yeah, this did come at us as a uh, statutory requirement to review. I'm wondering if we've looked at all the constables in the same manner, whether this is going to be impacting any other constable uh, as we make this adjustment. Mr. Earl, we have looked at all the constables, and this is the only one where a change was needed. Okay, thank you. Bradley, your question, please. I'm seeking clarification. Bradley Brown seeking clarification. Uh, the way this is written on the agenda, it appears to indicate that the payment of $36,100 for this position is required by statute. Is, is that, in fact, the way the statute reads, or is the hearing uh, of, of this request required by statute? Which is it? Mr. Weinberg? I say it's both. The board sets salary and position in the county, but I'll just read you the part in the statute that uh, applies to this. It says in precincts with 12,000 more registered voters with fewer than 16,000 registered voters, annual salaries of not less than 36,100 or more than $45,825. That's, that's what a constable should be paid that falls into that category. All right, thank you. Both. Okay, if there's no more questions, we'll, call it. we'll go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Three in favor, none opposed. Thank you. And let's move on to item five, the elections department. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, members of the board. The election department, uh, this is for discussion on possible authorization to cancel the election for the Republican Precinct Committeeman and appoint a person to file the nominating petitions to fill the position. For Concho, Ann Avenetti, Susan Roberts, Thomas Samoff, Jim Stefnick, Barry Weller, and Bonnie Weller. For Eager, Liberal Ashcroft and Myrna Udall. For Round Valley, Marcel Donaldson and Brett Elmer. St. John's, De La Spawn, and Ray Trail. Gentlemen? Uh, motion to approve item five. Is there a second? Second, I guess. Okay, questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The ayes have it. Three in favor, none opposed. <coughs> Item six, Sister's <coughs> Office. Good morning. Good morning. Gentlemen, I had to wear my big shoes so that I could reach. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Assessor's Office requests discussion and possible approval of an intergovernmental agreement between Apache County Assessor's Office and Coconino County Assessor's Office for data processing consulting and assistance with Tyler for a period of two years at a cost of 44,800 per year. And this item was tabled from the June 17th board meeting and it has been reviewed by Joe Young with the County Attorney's Office. And this office requestfully uh, requests that it pass. Okay, get on. Okay, there's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be opposing this item with comments, uh, so I will not second this item. Okay. With that, I'll go ahead and second the motion. Uh, your comments there, Mr. Weller? Yeah, yeah Ms. Hext, uh, uh, I think there's been progress made in, in the assessor's office with the, uh, with the purchase and implementation of the software. And I, and, I, and I realize this has to do with uh, uh, a successful turnover, but uh, uh, I will not go into the details and length of issues that I've addressed with you in email. I will let the public know that there are concerns I have with uh, accountability and definition of uh, uh, deliverables in this contract that I do not believe um, uh, address uh, expedient uh, 
implementation of our software and training of our uh, employees uh, who, uh, who should have uh, received ample training through the $500,000 purchase of the software that we did get. So I'll be opposing it, and uh, if anybody's interested in my specific reasoning, I have that documentation in my office. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Winder? Yes, briefly, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've had quite a few discussions with Chris and Ben Dugdale about this issue. Um, I'd just suggest a couple of things for the board to, to think about. This uh, contract is very similar to the one that Coconino County has with La Paz County. Uh, they also have a tighter software, and they felt they needed something more to help them implement the software according to state statute and local conditions. They contracted with Coconino County to provide that service. Basically, the contract before you is similar, almost exactly the same as what La Paz is doing. But it's my opinion that uh, doing this will help the assessor's office to deliver a better product to the public. It will help them make this transition into this new software. We have many, many years of data that's, that's uh, fairly difficult to integrate into the new system. Uh, Coconino County has done this successfully, so I think overall this will help. Now it's 44800 per year. Uh, we can always cancel the contract at any time. I suggest we look at it after one year and see what's been done. The other thing I bring up is that the assessor's office has four vacancies that they have not requested be filled, even though I know they have a lot of work and need the help, but they're willing to forego that in lieu of having this professional help provided by Coconino County. So overall, in my opinion, I think it will help the assessor in providing the services to the public that uh, they're charged with giving. Thank you, Mr. Winger, for explaining. Okay, there's no other questions or comments. We we'll call for the question. All in favor to approve, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. The ayes have it. Two in favor and one opposed. Thank you. Thank you, John. Okay, let's move on to item seven, treasurer's office. <sighs> That's a banana. I have to take off my shoes to reach this. <laughs> Good morning. Treasurer's Office, discussion of possible approval of renewal of three line of revolving credit for Ganada Unified School District in the amount of 1.3 million, Concho Elementary School District in the amount of 300,000, and Winderock Unified School District in the amount of 3 million. We also have a new line of credit for Red Mesa Unified School District in the amount of it's less than ten million, but we got the amount of one million dollars. Okay, gentlemen, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I do have questions, Mr. Chairman, when appropriate. Okay. Is there a motion? Right, move that way, please, sir. Okay. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll motion to approve with questions. Okay. You're not necessarily well, your questions. Second, second, I should say. Uh, yeah, uh, that last statement you made uh, was not written here, I believe. Did you say that uh, that the Red Mesa Unified is reduced to one million? Yes, on the um, declaration it says less than ten million dollars, but I wanted to make sure the exact amount. So we got the modification of commitment to one million dollars. So what we are approving is no more than $1 million line of credit. And just for record, the three school district, Bonato, Concho, and Winderall, did not use any this past year. So we're just renewing. Okay. Is, uh, if I may continue, yeah, is uh, some of the uh, delayed allocation of funding causing some of this activity right now for cash flow issues. Yes. So there might be more coming up um, due to the Trans Western Pipeline. So we're working with all the, the districts. And we have a meeting with um, the Health Department tomorrow, and then we have another meeting with the fire, the fire district sometimes this week, too. Thank you. 